Welcome back to the Rebirth. We secured a ton of resources this week and the furnaces have been running day and night, so now it's time to put it all to good use by beefing up the support columns, building up the crafting area, revamping the trainer area, patching up the ground, and cleaning up the debris. It'll be a long couple days and nights of base construction, but we'll be one step closer to completion. The team has been deployed, we've just been waiting on you. But now, it's go time. Okay, so since the focus today is going to be mostly on base construction, we gotta check on a couple of things here first. The first is gonna be, how are we looking on cobblestone? We're looking so good on cobblestone. We've gotta find another propane tank to get the other shredder up and running though. Oh, and did I just see that, um, oh, <laughs> Zoe is outside. You need to come with me. Somehow fell out out of the base. Seems to be, be kind of a bad habit for these guys, despite the fact that I put up a railing for them. Uh, makes me think, um, is there, there's gotta be a, can I go out here? There's gotta be a better system that we can come up with here. Uh, just for the moment though, let me get some cobblestone cube shapes crafted. Okay, what are we looking at here? Oh, by the way, I think I should be able to, cause I'm not, I'm not able to um, aim this at all, but I think if I pick them back up and put them back down again, that that's been fixed. We'll check on that in a little bit. For now, oh geez, what are we gonna do here? I think, so I've selected a better block for this section right here. And that block is, if we just go into the shapes menu and search for arrow, it's this uh, arrow slit half ramp tip. I don't know what the intended use is for some of these blocks, but um, oh no, no, no. Are you gonna be in the way? Anyway, so I think this will both look good and uh, and, and it's like, it's shoot through. We'll, we'll try to demonstrate that in a second. Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be really finicky here, isn't it? Okay, everyone did well except for you, Sarah. Sarah, you need to definitely just back up a little bit. Oh, you're just gonna make me do this. Oh boy, there we go. Okay, so that way they can see through better and they can shoot through better. And if I just demonstrate here, that is, you heard the ting, hopefully, that was the bullet going straight through this block. This is bulletproof, because I think before, these guys were just shooting the blocks, and that's bad because it damages the base and it obstructs their field of fire, so we do not want that. The other problem appears to be the railing, and the railing is a problem because I can't place the trader down on that specific block because there's technically a block occupying that space that's messing us up because they are somehow they like when they spawn in when i either load the game up or when i'm driving back they just they're on the other side they're somewhere else they fall through the floor it's just it's glitchy so that means we got to come up with some kind of an alternative here oh man i i just don't know there's no way i can do this without actually occupying these two block spaces because the we can't use either one of those spaces all the way across. The only thing I can think of is um, to just maybe come down here and see if it's gonna work. Is to put some sort of like a like a pole that goes all the way across. That's not gonna work either because this is occupying a half block space coming out. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that either. That's really exposed up there. Oh, it does look a little bit better though. I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get perfect <laughs> out of this configuration here. You know what? I'm just thinking about it here, and I I was just using a block yesterday when I was playing on the multiplayer server that uh, might work for this. It is a trim block. It's one of these door frames, which I believe occupies a one block space, but it kind of like is longer than one block. See, so like, this is what we need. It's just like a railing that goes across, but that actually flushes up over here. Oh, okay, I did find the block. It's the door trim top, and it does, it only goes an eighth of a block into the, the adjacent space there. Oh, what about that? Because we're not gonna put anyone over here, and that actually, like, connects to the front rail. That just might be the trick. I just, I can't, I can't stand the thought of there being like a hovering block here. Okay, and uh, this is probably, of course, of course it's gonna not, um, yeah, I'm gonna need to get uh, some other extra block to flush this up here. Of course, you know, actually we could just do the one meters all the way across, maybe? Okay, the question now is, is this block bulletproof? My assumption is going to be a big no. Yeah, it's not which means it's gonna be right in their field of fire. Man, this just keeps getting more and more complicated by the minute. Yeah, and, and where I'm standing, 
that's gonna be an issue. Oh boy, I can say we're, we're gonna be here for a minute looking for the right block shape. Okay, hear me out on this. <laughs> what about the security gate? When all else fails, just go back to the security gate. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be shoot proof. Oh wait, what if, what if we did the uh, dynamic grate here instead? Right, because then that would kind of angle down. I don't know. Maybe this is gonna work. And then I was also looking. What if we knocked these top shapes out and replaced them with these ones just for symmetry's sake? I mean, I don't know if anything has to be in this space. I'm just imagining that spiders are gonna be able to jump up here, and I that would just be an issue, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, that looks so bad. All right, I'm just gonna like put a pin in this one. I'll come back and revisit it when, I, when I'm a little bit fresher. I think uh, it, it, it does you some good to kind of just take a little bit of a mental break from something when you're stuck and come back and look at it later and also just get a look from the outside. I mean, from the outside, it doesn't look too, too bad, especially if I put these like spiky tips here on the top. Let's maybe just do that and then see what it looks like. That might give me the inspiration I'm looking for. Okay, that looks... That looks moderately better. Now I'm thinking, like, what if we just took out that middle block right there and just ran the uh, security vent thing over to the side? Okay, that's what that looks... Okay, uh, this is the best looking that I've seen it so far. It's still, it's still a we little weird, though, and I'm not gonna commit to this just yet. Okay, <laughs> let me go get uh, some of the shapes I've been making. And we'll get started on stuff that I actually know what I'm doing on. Alright, so first up, I'm gonna just replace all of the broken top destroyed blocks with top soil. So that we don't have to worry about uh, any sort of foundation problems. And then we can kind of dress up the aesthetics out here in the front too. This is an extremely monotonous task, but I at least I can rest assured that we don't have to do this anymore. Because, uh, like I said in the last episode, the Seekers are not doing a as much damage to destroyed stone anymore. Kind of a one and done sort of area beautification project. And by one and done, I mean probably two and done because I'm about to run out of topsoil. Okay, that is 100% of my topsoil blocks and uh, I would say that's good enough. Certainly things could look a lot better down there by the lakeside, but eh, not by much. Okay, time to move on to something else then. All right, since we're on the topic of area beautification, it's time to clean this mess up here in the front yard. We gotta get rid of all of this crap out here. We've got trees obstructing my vision, we've got cinder blocks blocking my vehicles, we've got vehicles that are blocking my vehicles and that should be just be salvaged. I did chop a couple of these trees down last night because I was looking for resin, but then I learned that you can't get resin out of the burned trees, you gotta get them out of the regular trees. Whoop, a little bit of a screamer battle there, whoopsie. Making a little bit too much noise with the auger and breaking apart all these pieces of metal and crap. Alright, I think I've done enough cleaning for one day. I've got another screamer horde chasing me around. Alright, it's more like a mini project here, but I'm gonna just knock out all this rubble that's around the end of the ramp and fix this. Get this all finished off. There's all kinds of these just, like, rubble lumps everywhere, <laughs> making my life difficult. Oh boy, and I, uh, almost just died there, so... Red Bull! Oh jeez! Death's Whisper! Oh, it's another freaking horde of werewolves! Great! You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna kite them over in front of the soldiers. I need their help. Yep, come on over this way, buddy. Who is this? Alan Giorgi. And uh, the rest of them are going for my vehicle. That's not good. It is just the police car. I guess that's fine. All right, Alan, it's you and me. Step, there we go. Down. Now it's gonna kill all your friends. Zombies are rolling up as well, although I can see one fighting a zombie off in the distance there. Oh, I took radiation damage again. All right, here we go. We got Moogie. Moogie is a werewolf as well now, and Cookie44 going head to head here. I'll chip in a little bit because it look, looks like Moogie is outclassing Cookie by, by quite a bit. All right, at this point, it's about 50-50. There we go. Okay, good job, Cookie. My goodness, this is just the project that never ends down here. Now that I'm kind of looking at it, this uh, this should definitely have uh, some sort of a foundation going around it on the bottom. Oh, it's a wandering horse. I just can't get a break around here. All right, let's fight then. Are you kidding me? This is not a rampage. That's like five in a row. There we go. There's my rampage. Okay, are we done here? Wow. Hey, when it rains, it pours in Rebirth, doesn't it? Yeah, this is just my last, like, six blocks I had to do for that project. Just wanted to, like, kind of, kind of sink it into the ground, you know? So, just in case. Just in case something bad happens. We should be all set. We shouldn't suffer any kind of a collapse, because there's, like, 
a lot of blocks going into this thing here. All right, our werewolf left us, uh, Alan over here left us a loot box with, uh, ooh, that's some really good stuff, actually. That's enough to make another uh, Scar Light, which, oops, I'm supposed to sell those, my bad, which we can sell for like uh, seven or eight hundred dukes or uh, dollars. Okay, well, it is almost nightfall and I've got no plans to go out and do any raiding tonight. I just want to use all the block shapes that we have. And so what I'm going to do first is just kind of dress up the support pillars all the way to the top and then we'll probably do some uh, interior construction after I'm done with that. So I'm going to start with these like ramp incline fillers. Is that what this is called? Yeah, ramp incline filler uh, at the sort of corners of all of these support legs. So it begins the really perilous task of just pulling my way up to put all of these on the side of the building. Whoops, I uh, psh, sprayed my leg. What a surprise. Go ahead and just slap some steroids into me. All right, so we're slowly making some progress. It's kind of a tedious project, that's for sure. We gotta like position the lighting so that we can see something, both you and I. Gonna contend with all the random zombies flying up on you like this guy. Oh, a whole bunch of them, oh boy. Okay, working on my tactical rifle skill and my tactical tanking skill too. Let's ram my leg again. More steroids, please. All right, so with the, the three sides, basically, or four sides, I guess, the exterior, I, you could say, I'm just gonna start working on filling in the support pillars down here on the bottom, or in the middle, I should say. Nothing like a half dozen beers to top off your hydration at 4.42 in the morning. So I think now you're probably gonna be getting the sense of why I was saying the base is not going to collapse. This is a total of, I think it's 11, 9, 10, 11 support columns. Each of these are three by three, meaning that's nine blocks that you would have to chew through to get through one. Uh, nine times 11 is 99. So basically you'd have to take out a full 99 blocks here in order to completely collapse the base. Plus it's like partially held up by the front part over there. So there's like, sort of accessory stability. Whoops, I missed one little piece here. All right, yep, one more little just cursory. Whoops, missed another piece right here. Doing a real good job today, very thorough. There we go, I think that's it. Let me just take one more glance around. Yeah, th these are really, really beefy support legs. I typically don't do uh, bases on support legs because this is kind of what you have to do if you really wanna do it th the right way, but um, it really does pay off in the end. Okay, so the next thing to do then is to work on construction up here in the crafting room. I like these beveled shapes for windows. I think this is my favorite way to go about it. And we're going to have lots of windows in here for natural light. And I not only like them on the bottom, but I like them on the top as well. And then I made three of these three by three roll up doors. And probably the best way to go about them is to put them right here. Hang on, let's just change the color to... Oh, do we want to go with the red? Because I always do red bases. Maybe we should try to change it up a little bit here. We'll go with uh, we'll go with purple actually, because purple is kind of in theme with the uh, the colors of the mod and and the witch doctor class for that matter. And the second door will go in the same configuration here in the garage that kind of will separate us in, in the fighting area from the rest of the base. All right, let's see what I can come up with here for storage solution. We gotta get it up off the ground. I think eventually we're gonna have to put workbenches here in the middle. We'll have to have like middle lanes. And uh, that means that these storages have to go up onto shelves. But we're getting into the territory now where um, I've I've gone pretty far past the, the drawn design. So I'm just winging it at this point. The clock is ticking a little bit. And so I can't be here all day testing shapes and experimenting. I've gotta kinda come up with a plan and roll with it. Okay, and I'm starting to see my first problem here, and that's that I can't put the support brackets where I want them. I can put them like here. We could do like three storages there, three there, and three here. That puts us up to nine, which is how many we have right now. And honestly, I don't think we need much more than that. Yep, yep, I'm, I'm rolling with it. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> I gotta pick something out and commit. Jeez, I'm thirsty again. Those uh, four beers I slugged down earlier were not enough. Here, have another four. We get a real good buzz going here at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, so originally when I designed this base, uh, it, uh, it called for a greenhouse on the top. It was gonna be the whole ceiling of the base was gonna be one big long greenhouse and it was gonna be pretty cool, but uh, then I figured out that, um, you know, plants don't grow in the wasteland here, so had to kind of pivot a little bit. And so basically the whole top of the base is going to be different than uh, than how I anticipated. And I'm not sure 
uh, how exactly different that's going to be. All right, I think the first step is just bring the wall up another block shape. That way we can just put some like dummy boxes down to simulate uh, what the storages are gonna look like over here. And I don't know, I usually, wedge 60s are probably my favorite block for kind of like a gradual slope of a rooftop. I'm committing to it, I ran out of uh, plywood shapes and so I can't test anything more out. <laughs> just roll with it. Okay, and then for the interior, we could just repeat what we did with the wedge 60s, uh, but then again, I don't like the gap on top of the storage box. All right, whatever. I've spent enough time <laughs> trying to brainstorm on this. Okay, that's what I got for you for now, and we'll put some glass up here in the top eventually. Uh, to be determined if that's also going to be the helipad. I'm not sure yet. Haven't really gotten that far. I guess it could be. Put a stair out here. This out here is gonna be, it, it has to be like a fighting balcony because with all of the trainers down here and the soldiers in the floor below, along with us during Horde Night, if a wraith comes by, I'm hoping that they won't focus on the back of the base because why would they? They're gonna target the player. And so this is going to be the battleground against those guys. And so I think my plan was to, um, like make a window here where we can put in some SMG turrets. Just need some slight renovation here. And we just need to make like um like a, I don't know, like a firing cone or I'm not sure how you would explain this. And that'll just give the, uh, the turrets a little bit more flexibility in terms of like their firing lane. Speaking of firing lane, let's get these set in here and just make sure that uh, everything looks okay. That should be fine. Now we'll be able to access it from the back, but Probably want to cover it up from the front if we could. Ah, uh, yeah, it's gonna look weird if I do that. We'll hold off on that part because I kind of, I thought about putting like a security gate on the front, but then I selected this half beveled shape and that's uh, that's just not good. That's probably not the block I want there eventually. Uh, this, I, I had thought to leave this open, not like completely open, but like put some bars in here or something so that Wraiths can't get down in, and wraiths can spawn skeletons too, so you don't want skeletons in there either. But, um, the- everyone could, like, sh turn around and shoot upward here if they wanted to. Whole bunch of extra cobblestone cubes, we, we're probably good on those now, we can probably just cancel the rest. I don't think there's a whole lot left for construction left to do. At this point, it's kind of just about, like, just, uh, dressing everything up with catwalks and decorating and filling in all the empty spaces. Yeah, I like that. Don't like this gap here. Uh, I should try to figure something out for that at some point. I have no idea what we're doing here yet. Probably can just kind of fill this all in, at least for now. Oh, right, and down here. Down here we were gonna do the same thing except with the shotgun turrets, but I still haven't found any double barrel shotguns. I really want to get those up and running for the horde, though. Maybe we could, um... Buy some. Oh, great, a freaking horde out there. Let's go fight. And a first aid kit. <laughs> fix all those uh, scorching burns and the sprained leg that I got from a zombie punching me in the mouth. Okay, let me get these cars out of the way and we'll do like one final look at the base. I wouldn't say it's done now, but it's it's like, you know, 80% done, I guess. Oh yeah, a bunch of big craters over here that I forgot about. I'll have to fix those. So there it is. For better or for worse, I, I got some plans to make like some spikes there on the top, so I'll get around to that eventually. Sir, no, no, hold, hold on, no. Look out. Man, it feels good to have everything basically fully functional, though. We can roll right up into the base, park it. Everything's dressed up in here for the most part. Maybe what I do now is just some electrical work. Get all this crap up off the ground. Gotta find some more of these nice fluorescent lights, too. Okay, so this gives me an opportunity to try something different for, like, the turrets that are embedded in the wall. Right, the block I should have chosen is the Wedge 60. Basically, when in doubt, Get a wedge 60 out. Right, because then I can come in and get a security gate plate and set that in just like so and kind of like create, um, you know, just create like a little bit of a, a barrier for it, I guess. And then I'm sure there's some kind of a trim frame I can put on the bottom. Yeah, how about this door trim two-sided like this and that. Regular door trim, security gates on this side. 
And I think that'll do it. Then we can just put the shotgun turrets in here when they're ready. And we'll just basically, it'll be like having two extra soldiers in here with shotguns for the nice close range fighting here at the front. Yep, I think that's gonna work a treat. Okay, let's just take a moment to fix myself again. Steroids, crush and blue, honeycomb, hungry anyway, so bacon and eggs. And we're on quite the bender, so have a couple extra beers. I got a generic perk book I can read. I think I'll take that into Daring Adventurer. That should max us out on that, and I don't have to worry about the glasses thing anymore. I can instead just wear like my lucky looter or pack mule glasses. Speaking of glasses, let's take a look at the structural stability here. Yeah, looking real good. I think the worst part of the base is probably the front walkway. But we've known that all along. I just got all the doors reconnected out here and I wanted to take a look at the blade trap situation because I've learned that blade traps can actually activate your rampage and so we definitely want those to be hitting the heads of zombies in order to help out with you know rampage initiation. I still don't know if these blade traps here are doing much but I think that the they're doing something. I mean we could just put blade traps like like right here. I think this one's great because that's when they're cutting the corner around here. So definite yes on this one. Okay, we could put blade traps up here. I just feel like if you put the blade traps up here, they're gonna, they're just gonna blow up. Put them back here. They're just gonna get shot and and all the zombies are gonna be pushing this way. So maybe these, I don't, I don't like where these ones are. We'll put it that way. And it's not like we're trying to repair the blade traps really at all because they're gonna be too far away from us unless we did put them right here. But honestly, there's just so much chaos going on over here that I don't think that's the best idea either. All right, well, I'm committed against these ones at least. Just as I was doing that, I was thinking to myself, is it possible to catch zombies in the head? It would be really unreliable, wouldn't it? To have um, like two blade traps on either side of the, the um, stairway here it's like you could put one on top of this and like as oh <laughs> that, that cube shape is broken forgot to nail down one of the sides to it there we go okay so as they're rolling up yeah i mean their head has to go right straight through a blade trap in that scenario so that might work okay first of all set that down so that i don't so that i know what i'm dealing with here Okay, so we can do it there then, and that's it. That would be there. Bring it up by two on each side, and then the blade trap goes right there, and that's gonna work on both sides. Okay, I'm gonna commit to that on both sides. Right, and this should this should definitely help with getting some headshots on zombies and getting that rampage started. Let's just, yep, whoop, 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 yep, that works. Doesn't work unless you try it on yourself though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and how does that put us with uh, power? Really good, still fine. <sighs> and I still haven't come to a conclusion on what to do about this. <sighs> do we need this? Should I put something else here? It has to be something that's bulletproof. It has to be something that's kind of, that's flush, that will sit in there nicely and look okay. It just, it's obstructive. Maybe I should just do bars. Do you think bars would just look better overall? We're, oh, wait, we were having issues before with people being able to shoot through I thought that was security gates so yeah maybe it's a good idea that I'm changing this although I think I did see in a patch note that that had been fixed I don't think I want to take any chances though I remember how painful it was breaking those out the last time I that looks considerably better if you ask me uh geez okay what are some alternative shapes we can use things that are bulletproof okay we could use the catwalk railings security gates and dynamic grates are a possibility you could also use things like uh you could use these uh, scaffolding ladders that might look okay just something that keeps uh, zombies jumping zombies and also flying zombies out oh that i think looks the best so far and I think when you put the scaffolding ladder on its side like this, it's no, it's no longer a ladder. I don't know that for sure though. Let's test that out. Uh, yeah, no, I can't. I can't use that as a ladder anymore. Okay, I d I like this. I think this is something I can I can work with. I was right all along. I just had to come back to it later on with a fresh set of eyes and find something that worked a little bit better for me. Yeah, yeah, not too shabby. I, I, I don't mind that a bit. I don't know what you guys think, but uh, I'm the boss here. So <laughs> what I say is what goes. And now I should be able to put the trainers down 
and I don't think that they'll have as many issues like falling out of the base and being ridiculous, basically. Ugh. And I will save one spot yeah, there for the black uh, black shield trainer there that we should get access to here in the next few days. So we got Pascal now, Tyler, Barnett, we got Briston, and Raven Dawn, and Belzy Rob here. Man, we have made some significant progress. All I really need to do now is sort out what I'm doing up here. I want to take a look at, see, we just use this as a ladder now, I think. There we go. I need to sort out what the heck is going on up here. Is this going to be a helipad? Am I going to build a staircase down there? I think that makes the most logical sense. I'm going to have to bring these up and make some, like, um, I guess you'd call them spires or basically some spikes on the support columns. And then, um, yeah, we need to figure out a floor situation here. But for now, I'm itching to get out of here. What do you say we do like a night raid somewhere? All right, man, everything's looking so much better around here. It's really, really good. Okay, I need a, I want a railing on this for sure. I need to start making a list. I've got to figure something else out here because that, that does not look good there. And I, I need to sort out how to fix that. I don't really know off the top of my head. Also, we need to look into bulletproof glass production. Kind of forgot about that whole thing. Okay, this is the switch for lights and blade traps, and these are the switches here for doors. We'll just leave two open at a time, shut these guys in. Actually, you know, if we're going out for the night, somebody needs to come with me. Hobie, you're coming with me. You and me tonight. Come to think of it, we need to kill um, the, those shock immune run, zombies. Let's just bring uh, Logan with us too. Follow me. Do I have enough money to send somebody out mining? Dank, go mining. Go get me some lead because uh, I need more bullet tips. There you go. Thanks, bud. The rest of y'all are coming with me and we are going to hopefully be able to open that door. There we go. Uh, we're going to go to the snow biome. And I, who was it up there? Is it Trader Joel or Trader Bob or something? Let's see if he has a night mission for us. And if he doesn't, we'll just go slaughtering some shock immune zombies for the rest of the night. Man, it is going to be a long drive to get over to the snow biome. And it's straight through this nasty part of the wasteland. When I said nasty part, I meant underwater part. It's okay, we've got the best vehicle in town for this kind of stuff. I think, anyway. <laughs> We're making some progress. Just a little bit slow, that's all. Yep, we made it. All right, I'll meet you over at the trader in the snow biome. All right, we're here at the Red Rocket. Now, between us and the soldiers, uh, we should be able... We shouldn't have any problems, basically, uh, just murdering zombies kind of randomly as we go. Here we go, we got Trader Joel. Joel, you don't have freaking jobs? What is wrong with you? I don't understand why you don't have jobs. He's got an inventory. Oh, he's got a double barrel shotgun. Oh, crap, I can't afford it. Oh, I could sell him. I can't sell him anything. Crap. Uh, what, what do you have that I haven't stolen yet that I can sell back to you. I managed to find a couple of schematics and stuff in order to get what we needed to purchase this double barrel shotgun. Absolutely need that so we can make our first shotgun turret. Oh, there's another one there. Oh boy. You better not restock tonight. Restock day is day 40. Crap, he's gonna restock in 30 minutes. He might have another one though. What is going on out here? Oh my goodness, it's a seeker. He'll have a whole bunch of money. We just gotta kill him before the night's over with. Did he just jump his way in here? Ra it's Raven Dawn. Raven Dawn's a double agent, it would appear. Ow. Oh man, Hobie took that one like a champ. Okay, grab everything. Money is most important. We'll worry about the zombies later. Joel, give me that extra double barrel shotgun, please. There it is. Got enough for it. Awesome. Look at that. What are you all doing in there? Anyway, that's definitely not what I wanted. Did you all flip the friggin' vehicle again? This vehicle is uh, very rollover prone. All right, well, it looks like we're not doing a mission. We're just hunting, hunting for shock immune zombies. Okay, honestly, I was expecting to see more of the shock immune zombies out here, but these are mostly, I think, fire immune. It's a little bit more difficult to tell these days because uh, all you can see is the particle effect on the hands, which I, I, is my preferred way of, uh, of having the mod anyway. Toxic zombie. Another regular fire immune. This is an explosive immune right here. Okay, so far, no luck. I thought we'd find a dozen or more at this point, but no, that doesn't seem to be the case. So this is just a dinky little town here. I guess we could explore the second half of it. It looks like there's another one over there. A couple of guys over here 
that all look like normies. Do you think we're more likely to find them inside of a POI? Should we just do like a quick raid here? Loot stage 132, not too bad. If we could just find like a tier three or something, something we could blow through in two or three hours, that would be preferred. Right now we're at 61 at 41%. Just start rolling through here and seeing if we can spawn any in in the, in the POIs. Nope. Just a fire boy. By the sound of it, there uh, we've got a lot of company here. Here we go. Oh, there's our first right there. Shock immune zombie. Although something blew up and killed it, I don't think that that counted as ours. I think it was a landmine kill. That's nice. Off to a great start here tonight. Oh boy. Okay, grab that fire extinguisher off the wall and put this crap out. I don't have to deal with all this nonsense tonight. Quick little main loot, I guess. We're in, ooh, oh, HK416. Yeah, we've already surpassed that MP5A2. I'll have a quick peek at that, thank you very much. Oh, this is a nine millimeter weapon. Where did, what, what is, what the heck is going on with all of you guys? Oh, there, hello. Oh, what is this? The G36C. Got a whole bunch of new weapons to try out here. And then the ST2011 schematic, some kind of a pistol. I'm very fortunate, I'm very uh, grateful that I didn't select, holy crap, this looks cool. Uh, that I didn't select some sort of a, a pistol <laughs> class because I don't think things would be going over very well with like seeker fights. Oh my goodness, what are you all doing in here? This gun is awesome, holy crap. Ooh, there's like a certain percussion to it that I really like. Okay, can we not have this fire here? And also, uh, where's my backup fire extinguisher? There we go. And is everybody not on fire? Looks like we're good, except for me. Get away from me. I, I took radiation damage. I am just in rough shape here. I've broken an arm. Great. Okay, just get the guns back out. And I think this was good. We, we got zero, I think, out of this whole place. Oh, wow, that fire rate on this is nice. Even that place caught on fire. Okay, we need to find a different part of the neighborhood. Going on like a, I, I've gone through probably a full 12 pack today of beer and I'm not stopping now. All right, let's pick one more house here or two to blow through and just see if we can get any shock immune zombies at all. Man, this is like my favorite gun ever. Holy crap. Oh, and uh, big fire here. Look out. Hobie, get out of there. Oh, this guy's, this place has a big underground portion here with a little bit of loot. This is gonna have to do it for us, I think. Oh, wow. Another Darkeen Scythe. Is it better than the one I'm using? It is not. Spaz 12 schematic. Ooh, auto shotgun and crowbar. Hobo stew for breakfast and... What is this, anyway? It's just a bunch of dirt. Isn't it? Oh, whoa, hello there. That was a shock immune zombie. Finally, got, got our first one of the night, I think. Yeah, and speaking of night, it's over. It is now morning. Tomorrow, or, or today, actually, later today, is the horde. There's another shock immune zombie right there we can kill, nice. Right, we're up to uh, 64, we got three tonight I think it was. I think we started off at 61, right? <laughs> Jeez. Well, why don't we put a pin in this mission, we'll pick things up here in a couple of hours and we'll continue hunting for shock immune zombies throughout the day and then we'll head back to the horde base and make final preparations for the horde later on tonight. But anyway, my friends and fellow survivors, I think we can call it a day. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all, and goodbye.